Previously on Roll Britannia. Will you join me? Oh, so willingly. Derek answers with throwing two daggers. 15 points of damage, and it was a magical weapon, wasn't it? Five flumps appear. You are visibly terrified, and you yep. age 20 years. <laughs> that would make Derek 195 years old. <laughs> right, or it's my turn to use magic, so I'm going to use Hunter's Mark. Roll be... D100. <laughs> you shrink nine inches. So now. Uh, just FYI, that is a permanent effect. <laughs> So magic's all right then, guys, is it? I throw Don't the box worry. now on fire in a shock, panic, hot potato moment at the nearest flump. <laughs> we all start to excrete this disgusting, yeah. smelling, liquid gas type spray. Natural one. Jeff's the smelly kid now. You are literally so disgusting right now that you damage people with your Can smell. I, yeah, I'm going to shoot him with banger. Why not? Jeff? Good news, you're not setting fire to him. I'm not setting fire to him. I'm going to go up to him, blind him using blindness. Doesn't specifically go blind. His eyes actually disappear. Come on, Flum! All the Flumps the turn in unison, reach out with their tentacles. Ooh. They actually uh, managed to do 20 acid damage. He's looking real bad off. Finish him, Derek. Um, you got it on the ricochet. Uh, a key drops to the ground. I'm going to go running up to the door. Insert yep, turn opening the key in it. big Unlocks lock the door. noise. You find in there a letter addressed to the Admiral. Goodness me. Let's just, just get out of here. Where the hell have you been? Make yourselves less disgusting. Derek, <laughs> try this. She hands you a small vial. Fine. Yeah, I'll drink it. I mean, you feel 20 years years younger. At this point, Keth feels suddenly compelled to go and speak to Starflower. All caught up? Good. Let's get back to the action. So, you all head in to Captain Timber's cabin, and he's there with Greg Flashman. Uh And they're just having a bit of a chat. And when Greg Flashman sees you coming, he says, Oh, hello, boys. Great to see you again. Shame we didn't get to use the old bangers, eh? No. I used mine quite a few times. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Hey, you. You used to be bigger, didn't you? Uh, yes. I, yes. Someone cut you down to size, eh? Uh, What? I'm... (laughs) Even though I'm shorter, my temper's also shorter, so don't... Don't push it, Flashman. Tally-ho, bop-bop, wing-wing, if we go! <laughs> right, I'm off to sort out the lads. See you later, <sighs> Captain. Bet you are. More training tomorrow? <laughs> uh, and he, uh, storm, he sort of... Uh, well, not storms, but... Uh, Briskly marches. What's the word? Briskly uh, moves himself out. out of the room. Yes, he sort of whirlwinds himself out of the room. <laughs> and uh, you're all left there in his wake. We're feeling weirdly impressed by him, as always. Mm. Um, and somewhat jealous of his De- Derek, uh, bravado. Derek sort of come round to the idea of him. <laughs> 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 Originally, he was like, Ugh. Okay, Captain Timbers, he, uh, he says, uh, Ah, thank you very much for joining me, boys. I'm, uh, I'm glad you've got a bit of that... Uh, ungodly stench that was purveying from you and uh, I see you've returned to your healthy looking young 170 odd years <laughs> old my dwarven friend thank very you very nice, much very you nice. look uh, don't look a day over whatever gnomish middle ages <laughs> <laughs> thank you I, uh, I take some moisturise yeah. yeah. well, uh, we'll, we'll have a chat about skincare routines and stuff because I could use very important tips. they say but uh, now is as they say not the time no so you brought me this letter, or rather Starflower did. You handed it over to her. We didn't open ways, it. Boys. Maybe that was a mistake, but we did deliberate for quite a long time. I imagine that you did. It was uh, fairly typical of you. I imagine you phoned the letter in the first two minutes and spent the following 43 uh, debating whether or not to open it or not. But uh, I'm glad you chose not to. We fought a uh, ghost. Keth got shorter, I got older a ghost and younger, day. yeah. I'm being crushed by the weight of responsibility. Ah, I see. Very wise, very wise. Now, this letter is, as you see, addressed to the Admiralty. So well done, you brought me the right thing. I've got all this just in case. (laughs) Dumps a big bag of paper. And just bring out all the rest of the papers work that I took from the desk. I have a a question for you, my friend, having a brief look at these. Why have you brought me a large stack of invoices? You might want to know what their (laughs) trade dealings were like, and so you could potentially... I don't know. Follow this one the is money. for the plumber. Follow the money. Well, you, you know, you, you can always, it's always useful to have a good plumber's number. So now you've got one on a ship. You know, if there's a, if there's a leak on a ship. What is the number for? Um, it's, it's the way of getting their stone and fast beach signal. 
Right. So you use yours Marvelous. to clock onto theirs. There are invoices for services. Fucking your face. We shall see what it contains, shall we? And he opens the letter with a, uh, a rather ornate-looking uh, letter knife that he has on his desk. And uh, he, uh, he has a quick scan through the letter, and he says, Right, boys, this may be, as they say, your lucky day. How, look you, do you feel about going to dinner? Well, I'm starving. Yeah, I like dinner. I mean, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah. Nando's, is that open? Yeah. We've got a Maris Not yet, my black friend. Card. Oh. Yes, I understand <sighs> he was the one who bought that. Something. That goose has had that in stock for several months now. And <laughs> surprised she managed to shift it for you. But uh, hey oh, and, and Nando's it is that's coming on board. We're very excited about the franchise and they're paying a pity penny for it. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not lying to you. I imagine retail now, space on this ship's quite expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it comes at quite a premium, I'll, uh, I'll not lie. Uh, they do offer a marvellous takeout service as well. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> have we recently got a sponsorship with Nando's or something that I've not been made aware I'm of? I'm hoping for one. Oh, I'm, I'm we're really hoping for one. Okay. Well, I'm hoping for a spon- tweet Nando's. when it eventually turns up. Yeah, I mean, if I can get a real Nando's black card, I will be <sighs> all over that. Because we won't be getting um, into weather anyway. spoons anyway. Certainly not in Birmingham. No. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't want one. <laughs> no. Uh, so he says, uh, this year, my friend, is... Not exactly what we anticipated, but uh, certainly a clue. You see, this, my friend, is an invitation to the Admiral, to a dinner, a very posh one, an affair of great pomposity. I think you fellas might be just the people to slip inside and attend said dinner. (laughs) Steady. How feels you about a a posh dinner? Is it like like a sit-down meal or...? Certainly is, my friend. Is there a dress code on there for slipping inside? Certainly is, my friend. It is a black tie. Yeah, you have to be at least six foot tall to enter. <laughs> well, then none of us are going. Then. <laughs> I'm still taller you than you. You have to be at least your original height or taller. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Why are you young again? Um, magic, I guess. <laughs> Derek shrugs his shoulder. <laughs> The invitation is to uh, attend the annual dinner of uh, Colonel Arthur Cameron. Is it the Short Manor on Nemesis Island? Short Manor, you'll fit in right there, Kev. (laughs) (laughs) And he begins to explain to you all about Short Manor and Colonel Cameron. He tells you that Colonel Cameron and how he's uh, an octogenarian and former colonel of the Imperial Army with a strange reputation for being able to extract the truth or at least what he believes to be the truth, from anyone. Stories of unimaginable torture have been leaked from that island. But the place itself didn't always belong to the Camerons. You see, this uh, short manor once belonged to the short family. It was uh, often described as a bright... Dwarves, were they? (laughs) Bright, that's that's heightest. Um, uh, it's the fine. For I equal can, heights will be right on there. I can say uh, it. To I fantastical say beasts it. everywhere. It was often described as a bright, happy, and beautiful place, but uh, more recent reports have described it as austere, formal, and yet somehow even more grand. Mm. Uh, you'll be attending this dinner with the uh, the highest ranking dignitaries from within the empire itself from across the shattered lands. So Mm. the high and mighty of uh, all the islands in the region, will, well, certainly the ones under imperial rule, will be attending. Will the uh, queen be there? Or the empress? No. It's not not that level of... It's not a royal engagement. It's for the the local dignitaries, shall we say. This sounds Um, fun. This is a secret... Secret mission, this is all over. The, uh, the invitation was being sent to the Admiralty um, as a clue. It was uh, an invitation that was given to the Admiralty uh, by request of the, uh, the Queen herself to investigate the location of one of the pieces of eight. Ooh. There is a suspicion that the Colonel has come into possession of it and has not told the Queen. Oh, naughty boy. Naughty, naughty mm. boy. So, the uh, captain, Captain Timbers, he says, uh, right, the, uh, the date for this dinner is uh, just a few days' time, and uh, as fortune has it, boys, we are less than a few days from the island. So, we will set a course. You, on the other hand, will need to look your best. So I think it's time you head down to the costume department, don't you? Oh, yeah. New suits. <laughs> 
Five you know what? Right. God, specifically, what has excited me is that I now get to go back on Hero Forge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and design another outfit. Oh, it's tuxedo time. All right then, boys. Time for your best dinner attire. And for now, fuck off. Uh, well, fuck off to you as well, Captain. And fuck off the to usual, you. The always. usual fuck greeting. Off, Captain. Very I, good, very good. As they fuck off, can I hang back? You certainly can. Do we have to take our headphones off? Uh, it's up to Maurus. Uh, no. Okay. I kind of want to take them off. Can I help you, young Maurus? I, uh, I did say fuck off, but uh, you appear to still be here. I, yeah, there's just one thing I wanted to say that I probably should have mentioned before, but you kept telling us to fuck off. Um, <laughs> when I was on the big Turtle Island and I got put in the prison, uh, Z, who I met, she mentioned something about being sent out to sea to work on a big tower that the Empire were building? A tower, you say? Um, I just you know where this tower is? No, she didn't mention it. Hmm. But there seemed to be building something. Just, just thought I should let you know. Maybe you could look into it. It's very good of you to let me know, young Maurus. I'm uh, not certain what to do with this information, but I will investigate as best I can. I will put, as they say, my feelers out. And hopefully I will find something out. I usually do. Right. You have given me much to think on. So, I'm gonna as I said before... Fuck off now. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, and you all... And you do. You, you leave the captain's cabin... And you see him, as you're walking out, he sits down at his desk and begins to pour over uh, various bits of paper. I think uh, it's time for a desk. shopping montage! Yes. But before we do, I want to talk to Derek. Yep. <laughs> okay. Derek. Yep. That's me. You young have all of a sudden ever. become young again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How? Yeah, we know, we, you know, I saw... You aged when you were frightened, and now you're and back I on the ship. I saw you get short when you were being a coward. Yes. So, come on. How, how did you regain your youthful middle age looks? Um, genetics, I think. <laughs> no. Um. Uh. No, I'm just, I'm just, just messing with you. Um. Starflower actually pulled me aside and um gave really? me. Really. Uh, gave me um, this little sort of thingy <laughs> in a vial, a greater rehealing or, you know, something like that. Um, and uh, I do know it's greater restoration, but Derek would not have paid that much much attention to the actual name. Um, Excellent. So she, she, yeah, she had me just basically shot that, slick that, slug that back, blah, blah, blah. Can't talk now. Uh, it's one of the side effects. Um, <laughs> Big tongue. But uh, yeah, it it sort of seemed to have done the trick. So maybe. Um, but she suggested the rack, which sounds quite painful, but at the same time very effective. Mm. Uh, wh- where got, did she go? We are going to meet a torturer, so he might have one as well. Do you see where she went? <laughs> Do you know where her uh, cabin is? Well, we had to go and I don't know where her cabin is. Uh, we don't have that kind of relationship, Jeff. Has been training with her, so he might know. Ooh, yes, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Yes, Kev. Jeff, where is she? Do you know where she is? Who's she? Sorry, Starflower. Starflower, yeah, her cabin's down there on the left. Brill. I'd like to go to Starflower's cabin, please, Mister Master. Okay, you knock on the door, then I guess, or are you just bursting in? No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna politely tap on the door and. Okay. With the ultimate uh, to to beg for some of this. But you tap on the door slightly lower than you would have done before. Yes. Still not. Still yeah. sort of just. All well, my clothes are slightly too long. About nine inches lower than you would have done. Yeah. Is your cape trailing on the ground now, by the way? Uh, yeah, much more than it did before, so it's all grubby in the bottom. Okay, yeah, you knock on the door and you uh, hear from inside it said, uh, Yes? Starflower, you in there? It's Keth. Well, I said yes, so. Yes. <laughs> Could have been no, someone else. No, I'm upstairs. Else. Excellent. Can I come in? I need to ask a favour. Um, sure. Just don't touch anything. Okay. Uh, 
and uh, you end, you open the door and go in. Tell me, tell me what you expect to see. <laughs> I would expect to see a sort of a pretty decent sized cabin. Um, but there's probably a shelf with lots of vials and potions bits on down on one side. It's very neat and tidy. Smells nice. There's like the little incense candle burning things, lots of ladies' feminine touches, um, drapes. Um, <laughs> very, ex- very excited about that. Drapes. <laughs> drapes. Um, it all looks very neat and tidily orderly. Um, a, a lady's, a lady's cabin, I would suppose. But, um, there's a few weapons on the wall as well. Um, mm. a real mix of, of magic, of neat and tidiness, thing. nice smelling things, and there is Starflower. Just a hit of death. Um, um, okay. you don't see what you expect to see. <laughs> oh, thank, that was, that was fun though. Uh, what you see instead is, well, the best way to describe it is a temple. There is, a sort of Too mat, bad. sort of bed on the floor. <laughs> simple roll, simple bed roll on the floor uh, with a few incense. There were, there was incense burning, uh, and Starflower because uh, Starflower doesn't really sleep. She doesn't really need a bed. She just has somewhere to lay down uh, when she uh, wants to because she's an elf, you see. And elves don't sleep; they meditate, and that's where you see her sat cross-legged in a sort of shrine-like area with a few candles and incense things and stuff, just uh, sitting cross-legged on the floor in this sort of area where you can actually see a, a beam of light coming in through the one porthole in the mm. room. Um, and there's a Carlexa on the wall as well, of course. And that is pretty much everything you can see apart from Set a wardrobe. Set an alarm for like three a.m. That'll be banter. <laughs> <laughs> Carlexa, add incense to my shopping list. Yes. <laughs> uh, what What do you want? And then Kef sort of his, his confidence has been knocked anyway, so he sort of stands there slightly, you know, shuffling his feet a little bit. It's like, well, uh, Derek told me that you managed to help him with some sort of potion after he came back. He was really old. And now you manage to somehow regain his youth, what there was of it. Uh, I am obviously noticeably shorter. It's a big thing for a half orc. Um, I was hoping that you could Quarter help old now. me out. <laughs> mm. Well. Oh, the king of suspense. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought the audio had cut out. Yeah, yeah. Second. But no. It's just Starflower, just... Hmm. Oh, she's meditating or... I'm not sure how to say this to you, Keth, because... I just don't like you. I generally don't like to be... <laughs> I just don't like to... I thought she was going to say, <laughs> I just don't like you. That's what I, gen- I was expecting. I generally, don't, I generally don't like to be cruel. And in this case, there is no potion that I know of that can... <laughs> return you to your height well oh what's that you didn't want to be mocked about a badge Jeff when it does it hurt does it, does it hurt, does it hurt? <laughs> what's that short ass can I eat from there <laughs> <laughs> I'm still taller for another couple of years <laughs> yeah but I'm still growing bitch I know <laughs> I'm a couple full of years grown left. orc how embarrassing for um, you this is what dads would be like Star stood up at this point to, uh, to look you uh, in the eyes in a sort of crouch down a little bit so she can see you face to face um (laughs) no i think you're about the same height now Mm. um and she looks you in the face and she says i am sorry keth but i can't help well i guess it'll save on the tailoring costs i suppose um except all the stuff you have to get retailored well yes uh well kick, kick him when he's down why don't you yeah. <laughs> careful look down at his feet and then um, make his excuses and leave then I guess just okay. want to just want to say just at the end of that scene I just want to say James just sent me a message about him two minutes ago that just says this is going to be disappointing <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been bothered <laughs> fucking slewed <laughs> <laughs> I think it was quite true oh, to the character that you were so obsessed by trying to find a different oh, route dear. that you've got to try oh. and find a different way of getting taller again that you followed it up. That was quite nice. Yeah, lovely. I like yeah. it. Nice it was character good. It was, moment. It was, I mean, it was a good character moment. I mean, I might, I might, 
I'll be honest with you, I think I'm tempted to give you inspiration for that. Oh, just because yeah. Keth, Keth's identity is so much about his physical presence. Yeah, yes, it is. I think Keth, I think Keth genuinely would go and uh, try and try any possible way to try and get his hype back. So yeah, have a point of inspiration. Yeah. Oh, they're good. They are, Keth. So what? Yeah. It's been so long since they the give last you things one. like magic marigolds. Yeah, I don't give them out very often. So what happens again with the inspiration? It's been so long. Uh, you can just re-roll. Yeah, yeah. Re-roll. you can basically choose to re-roll anything um, to expend expending that point. So should you fail at any point, you can do after your roll. You don't have to choose to take advantage. You can just choose to re-roll. Mm. Cool. But I think you have to take the second roll. Yeah, you have to take the second one. You can't just choose. So you can say. You know, if you really, really want to do it, you can say, well, I failed this, but I'm not going to fail. I'm going to use my inspirational points and I'm going to re-roll it. Because, mm. well, arguably, if you failed anyway, you'd... Mm. <laughs> your odds are you're going to try it anyway. Well, there's a silver Anything cloud. Anything that might happen is you might critically fail. Yeah. A silver cloud? No, it is a silver cloud. I was going to say silver lining, <laughs> yeah. but it's a silver cloud because it's still miserable. So I guess he's just going <laughs> to shuffle off and join the others at, um, any, yeah. at the suit any luck? At the- at any luck, Keth? Absolutely not. But oh, that's a sh- that's a shame, mate. It'll be all right, I'm sure. I'll go get you some it. boots or something. Yeah. So is it uh, shopping montage time? Yes, please. Roll montage. Okay, so into the costume department you go again, and this time you all have a very clear vision in mind. And yet again, you grab lots and lots of things off the racks, things that you like, things that you think will look good, and you all run into the uh, the four adjacent changing rooms, and in and out you, you come showing each other different outfits. Sometimes you're coming out wearing the same thing as each other, as you were before. Lots of, oh, sometimes you go into one compartment and you come out of a different one. It's very very strange um <laughs> all sorts benny of hill. shenanigans are going on yeah it's very <laughs> benny hill so at one point you all start chasing each other in and out of all the of all the Sexy party. It's like a, there's an old timey <laughs> policeman and a couple of secretaries yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> time for a sexy party yes. um <laughs> and eventually you all settle on your uh posh dinner outfits so mm. very briefly describe what those look like for me uh derek you go first um, oh, come on. So Derek would have wanted to know, sort of, and we could just gloss over this quickly. Um, would wanted would have wanted to know whether it's better to go as like in a tux or disguised as a member of the military. Um, he also would have very, very reluctantly, um, because of the stuff that he's been through, he will very reluctantly be wearing a modest fake beard because he feels that uh, a dwarf without a beard will draw way more attention than the, than they need at this point. Um, so he tries to find a natural, um, kind of quite short, but, but very modest beard, um, that he tries on, uh, and he looks at it in the mirror and he's like, okay, this will work. And he takes it off for now anyway. Um, so he's not wearing (laughs) it throughout the ship. Um, but he finds quite a nice, like, uh, um, you know, very, very classically tailored, uh, um, sort of like navy blue tux with a with a satin shawl collar and some patent leather shoes. Um, but he tries to uh, um, he he wants to make sure that that the cut of the actual sleeve um, hides sort of this little bracer of blades that he's got, um, yep. so that he can keep some sort of weapon on him. So maybe maybe I should roll some sort of stealth check to see how well that is. No, no, I don't quite like that. I like, cool. I'm happy with that. I'm um, happy with that. Uh, and uh, he chooses his smallest sort of... Uh, he tries to find um, uh, one of those, you know, like detectives have, the shoulder holster um, yep. for Banger and the Arcane pistol just go inside the jacket. Um, Lovely. And a nice, nice bow tie. Very nice, a bow tie. Lovely. Um, Maurus, you look like you had something in mind. I've just made myself on Hero Ford really quickly. <laughs> of course you have. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's a wizard at that. So I will uh, show you, uh, I'll show you that photo later. Um, yep. But I, I am out of my uh, cleric's robes. Yep. And I am into something a little bit smarter. Um, yep. It's a suit. Um, okay. Open at the neck with a... a a jacket and it's it's green um with a little bit of open a, collar nice yeah with a little little bit of a sort of think think loki you know when he's in his okay. suit yeah yeah gotcha gotcha um and it's green trousers green jacket sort of greeny goldy shirt and yeah. um 
greeny goldy shoes and i've Ooh. got uh sort of Very holsters for my gun and dagger on my back and i've got my shield and my uh, death cape still you're going to a dinner with a shield on your back and yeah. holsters <laughs> I mean, I can take it off, but that, it's on Hero Forge at the minute. I mean, um, I mean, tip, typically that that's not that's not a traditional dinner wear, unless you can argue some sort of um, uh, a cultural weapon. Maybe I don't know. I'll keep my dagger. I'm not sure a shield, oh, a dagger, yeah. and two pistols yeah. is is a cultural <laughs> weapon, but maybe you could. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you could uh, get away with one of them. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I'll dial the weapons down a bit. You know, think think uh, military uniform dress dress attire often comes with a sword, mm. but I don't think they come with uh, an you know a, a, an AK forty seven uh, bayonet <laughs> attachment, uh, you know, Full riot two desert helmet. eagles. <laughs> I don't think I'll sling throw you know battle axe through. It's ceremonial. You might not. No. no. <laughs> Kent's, wearing, Kent's wearing a suit, but it's just really lumpy at the back where all of his yeah. weapons are like hidden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, uh, since we're on to that, well, Keth, so what is then, Keth wearing? Keth is picked out because it's a dinner. He's gone for the suit, uh, but he's gone. He's gone for the full white dinner jacket. Mm, nice white white dinner jacket, Ooh, black oh, no, bow tie, he, oh, suits, no, you, sir. suits you, red oh, carnation, no. um, yep. uh, black trousers, and extraordinarily Lovely. shiny shoes. And he did have an issue when he went to order a. Well, he got his sizes and he ordered. Uh, it was a, a 38 long, and it was too long, so we had to go for 38 regular. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as he was trying, trying it for it a while, he... <laughs> like turned up at the bottoms. But... Yeah, just roll ups. <laughs> he had to chuck in, he quickly chucked in his original clothes, got quickly done over, retailored at the legs and all that sort of stuff. But that's what it is a white dinner jacket. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's, got sp- uh, he's got space for a dagger on his ankle, and he's got. Um, Brittany, which is his arcane pistol, tucked in the back of his trousers. And, yeah, I've got Bertha the musket. Brittany, uh, nice. Belinda Bus and like Brittany that. the arcane pistol. Belinda Bus. Um, nice. Because she's a bit magical and crazy. Um, Again, so, I think in terms of the, the sheer number of weapons you have on your possession, I think you might have to leave some of them behind for the yes. dinner. So a dagger and nice. Brittany Very is nice. all that's coming with uh, Finally then, Jeff. What's Jeff's formal dinner attire going to be? So Jeff uh, is he's gone for gone for a little bit of a comfort as well as uh, smart. Um, so he's got some nice big sort of. <laughs> unfortunately, they look a little bit like Uggs. They look a bit like Uggs, but I think, I think they are kiss supposed pajamas. to be smarter, more formal <laughs> shoes. But they're blue, um, sort of like a nice blue. smart blue, like a very quite a, a light blue, turquoisey blue. He's got brown smart trousers on, nice, and then he's gone for unfortunately very similar to Keth, a very white jacket. Uh, with a white right. sort of done up, uh, sort, sort of very very smart. I very it kind nice. of looks like a bow tie, nice. but it's more sort of like just a bow because it's not really. <laughs> it's got like a long bit. It's got like a bit of a, a waist, yeah, like a cream waistcoat as well. <laughs> like great present. shirt, um, and then because of his eye, that would be horrendous. Um, so he's gone for a monocle. It's a fancy dinner party, so he's got a monocle. Monocle, nice over the eye, um, and then just as a, a way of sort of mm. potentially trying to that sneak in a weapon, um, he's got a big top. Ah. Top hat, a big white top hat on as well. So, more importantly, yes. he's taller than Keth now. <laughs> like Fred Amazing. Yeah. Oh. As I'm looking up at this hat, yeah. going, just grumbling. I have to duck through doorways now, Keth. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, lovely. Oh. Uh, so you've all got your uh, your your new dinner attire prepared, and it's a few more days at sea. Um, mm-hmm. as the uh, Teldath heads towards the island of uh, Nemonis. Nemonis. Mm. Nemonis, that's the one. I, mean, I think I might have said Nemesis earlier, but it's Nemonis. Nemonis. Um, and yeah, you're, uh, you're all doing whatever it is you guys have done in those two days, preparing yourselves for high society. You've been learning all about the, uh, the, the do's and don'ts of uh, the upper classes, the upper echelon of uh, society from... Uh, from uh, River, of all things. She's been telling you all about them uh, and learning all sorts of things because uh, River knows many, many things. She's wise. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you uh, you learn much about how to behave in high society. Well, and yes. Mean. Um, and after those, after those lessons, you feel very prepared and you eventually 
the uh, the Teldath starts coming to a sl- coming to a stop, and you're summoned to the deck of the Teldath uh, by the usual uh, Car Lexar announcements. And uh, as you are, are you all heading up up on deck, or are you gonna? Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Are we suited up and going up? Yeah. Well, I assume you're gonna put your dinner suits on. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're all uh, you're all dressed and ready to roll. And as you head upstairs, you are greeted by uh, by Captain Timbers, and he says, oh, "Very smart boys. Very smart. You are certain to blend in with that outfit. Now, one of you must take the leading role, and the others will be, as they say, the entourage. So, who among you will be that? Which one of us I'm is pretty dressed? Sure I've got a top hat on. Yeah. I've got yes, a top hat on true. the tallest. I'm gonna say. Let's yeah. say top so, hat. Jeff, you're going to be the invited guest. Yes, of course. Uh, and the rest of you will be his entourage. Yeah. Being saved as Jeff Silverbow fancy. Just fancy. He Brilliant. looks fancy. <laughs> Emperor Silverbow. I love it. Brilliant. Oh, very smart. <laughs> Schne- very snazzy. Fair yeah, I think so. you might stand out a little bit with the shield and pistol and such and all, such like, but, um, you know. Uh, Miami Vice Malrus. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, your torches on. Fuck, that would have been amazing. I should have done that. Should have done a roll jacket. Yeah. Please. Never mind, it's yeah. too late now. Linen suit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and the captain, he says, uh, right, your uh, your longboat is awaiting you over there. When you arrive on the island, head straight to the manor. I implore you not to skulk around. It will only raise more attention. I suspect they will be expecting you, but they do not know who exactly you are. So simply show them the invitation. And he hands you the uh, the invitation. Tack, and, thanks uh, very much. Have we got uh, well, real names, fake names? What are we doing, lads? Just so we can get this cleared up. We don't give anything away. I, I, I would prefer fake names because, you know, we've made quite a name for ourselves. My name, I'm going to go with Jeff, but spelt with G-E-O-F-F. <laughs> <For> fuck's sake. <laughs> and then I'm going to go with Gold Dagger. Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> sure. I will be uh, Rick Danger. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Oh, because you're Derek, Derek, Derek. I like it. Rick. Rick Danger. Amazing. Love it. Yeah, Malrus, what are you going with? Have I got to learn these names or can I continue to call you your actual you character? You can call names? us our actual character can, names, but unless, if... unless we introduce ourselves to NPCs, then yes, you have to remember. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm okay. going to be um, M. Just M? M. You know, like what? M in Bond. M. Uh, so to not be suspicious, you're going to have a code you're name. You're going to have a code <laughs> name which begins with the first letter of your own name. Yeah. Well, I was panicking and that's what came out of my mouth. <laughs> Just the rest of the letters just didn't. Alrus yeah, just it, doesn't come out. <laughs> this is why we're it's, discussing it's, it now. It's not enough. T- so we don't get into a situation time. where you go, "Oh, I'm definitely not Malrus Toscobble." <laughs> it, it's um, it, it was the. What quickest, do you do for a living? I'm not a spy. <laughs> yeah, just the quickest name. Don't tell I could me think name, Pike. Ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so mannering Toscobble is it? Um, <laughs> Ooh. And uh, why don't you right, call yourself what? Milo? Uh, can't decide between Emperor Fabulous or <laughs> Sir William Shaftesbury. I'm going to go with Sir William no, Shaftesbury. Like Sir lot, William please. Shaftesbury with Bill Snakespeare. Brilliant. Okay. He's coming too. <laughs> Has he got a little bow tie as well? Uh, I was thinking about putting that on. I might put a small pair of spectacles on him. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, like a snake dinner suit, like a con rimmed. <laughs> <laughs> he hates he hates he hates putting stuff on so he's just got a pair of horn rim nice. spectacles nice I've got I've got all of those uh, written down now so I'll remember it's fine amazing literally oh. amazing okay cool uh, I've forgotten so, what yours are already <laughs> yeah I've forgotten Cass already we've just tied it Christ Captain Timbers he says he says to you the Teldath will remain here I'm rendezvousing with a comrade of mine, and, well, it means we will be on hand should things go tits up, as they say. There will, in fact, be two of us here to help, so all things considered, we will be able to rescue you should it all go wrong. But be aware... Are we still flying a black flag as we go into port? Uh, we're not going to port. You're sta- you're, the the Teldath has come uh, has come to a stop sort of just just over the horizon right, okay. from the island. And we go off from there. I'll have yeah. to look over the top of the horizon to see. Just uh, the people in the, the, the chap in the crow's nest, has, uh, it can just about see the island right. over the horizon okay. there. 
And he says, uh, your longboat here is one of our fastest. You'll be on land in no more than 15 minutes. Two shakes of a nuts rudder. Which one is the captain's chair? Because I feel like I should sit in the captain's chair of the longboat because I'm like the the official one. I mean, they're all self-piloted, so, I mean, you can sit where you like. <laughs> None of you have That's steered any so far. You've all just got in and <laughs> yeah, have gone. Very true. I'm going to on the deck with a remote control. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trusted to row our own stuff, but we'll fuck off. <laughs> we'll get it wrong. Right, you must find whatever this item is that they are using to cause these terrible pains. If it is what I suspect it is, then it will be in the shape of a doll. Mm. Starflower has uh, found me all the research on this item, and by all accounts, the reports we're getting from this island are, well, in line with what we understand this item to do. So, I recommend you, well, how do you say? Don't fuck it up. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Always useful advice, Captain. Thank you. Now, you still have your stones of far speech, eh? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I've got mine if back now. it all goes to tits... Just call, and we will be there. But if you do, there is very little chance that we, unless you already have it in your possession, will be able to acquire the item. Mm. So only do so if it all does go to shit. All right? And you think this okay. uh, item is in the possession of... What's his name? Adam... <laughs> Colonel Arthur Cameron. Colonel Arthur Cameron. Okay. He's a wily old fox. And he's been around for longer than you or I. He knows the game, and he is prepared to do whatever it takes. In my experience, that is pretty much anything. So, mm. go in, blend in, find the item, and get out. Do we have an accord? Yep. Hi. We do. I don't right. think we should be doing any music, but I agree with you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a witty one. I'll, I'll not lie. Right, Why into your longboat, the lot of you. Good luck, and fuck off. Fuck off. I'm really starting two, to get to grips Captain. with these gnome yeah. phrases now. <laughs> Fuck off, Captain. Fuck, Fuck off, off, Captain. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Fuck off, Captain. Fuck off. We'll be back before you know it. It's <laughs> my All favorite right. thing. Uh, and uh, the long tits, boats, uh, I don't know what to say. So that be the end of this week's tale. Our boys are off. Jump ship and set sail. Arr, not really. It'd be I, James, your devious dungeon master. Had you going there? It's time for a teeny tiny pause so that I can have you all to myself for a quick moment's chat before we get back to the story. Firstly, as always, I want to give a huge chest thumping thank you for listening to Royal Britannia. We are really close to achieving an amazing 12,000 downloads, and it's all thanks to you guys. Of course, there are some very important shout-outs that uh, require, well, shouting to a couple of very lucky salty lot. Firstly, to uh, Shay C. Rinky, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, who tweeted us, your story about the moment you broke your DM was hilarious. And take it from me, those four buffoons are convinced that they can catch me out and break my game. But I am a far too clever for that. <laughs> Unless it's Maurice, maybe, but never mind. And also a huge congratulations and a round of applause to our fiendishly difficult quiz competition winner, Nari R. Uh, you really know your stuff, and that, of course, means that you'll be naming Jeff's next weapon, unless Keth steals it from him, of course. But don't worry, you lot. More competitions are coming, which means more prizes. Huzzah! Now, returning once again to the random celebrity shout-out this week... We could hardly believe ourselves. And um, we discovered that Anthony Hopkins and Mel C are huge fans of the show. I know, I know. Well, hey, look, no one's come forward to say that they aren't. So, you know. <laughs> uh, now, uh, if you can't wait until next week's instalment of The Adventure, you can always check us out on social media. So whatever floats your boat, be that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, we're always singing shanties in there. You'll be able to see extra content, chat with the crew, and even win some prizes. Wherever you do get your podcast from, while you're there, you can really help us by giving Roll Britannia a snazzy five-star review. In the competitive, turbulent high seas of D&D podcast land, it really does help more fantastic people like your good selves to discover the show. And as always, make sure you mash that subscribe button or Derek will run you through faster than you can say, is that beard real? <laughs> but that's quite enough from me this week, so it's time to reach for your pistols, stare 
your best a thousand yard stare and crash back into the action. <laughs> the night of the longboat uh, lowers itself over the edge and uh, drops again. from just a little higher than you're comfortable with uh, into the uh, into the ocean. There's a bit of a splash. Yeah. And uh, just as it lands, the longboat starts to accelerate and accelerate and accelerate. And gradually, <laughs> you feel the boat start to lift up out of the water onto hydrofoils. Ooh. And it is cruising Ooh. along now. Absolutely busting along. And, uh, Jeff, I hope you're holding on to your top hat. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And, uh, yep, and within just a few minutes, your the island itself is coming well into view, and you see a beach ahead of you, and the boat uh, drops down off its hydrofoils, but it's not really slowed down much more than that, and mm. it's approaching the beach quite rapidly and slows down ever so slightly so as not to be terrifying, but as it reaches the beach... As you have experienced in the past, it just rides casually up the beach, leaving a trench behind it until sand resistance uh, comes, brings the longboat to a halt, and it gently rocks to the side. I get out first mm. and then help, quote-unquote, Jeff out of the boat, showing like extreme deference to him, as, as if he's like our boss. I... I'll step out and be like a sort of security detail, I guess. Some sort of bouncer for him. I will follow and just step up out, check in the area so it looks like we're supposed to be there. I'm looking Thanks around so. at the fact that these guys have suddenly jumped into uh, characters of the, like this and thought this is this is quite sweet and just gonna go with it. So I'm gonna take Derek's hand and look at Keth all like oh Ooh. sound Aww. and like get helped off the boat and this is this is wicked. This is the best island we've been to so far. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, to be honest, Derek, I could do with some grapes if you can get hold of some. Like, yes, sir. I snack. will look for them. A big, a big palm fund. <laughs> <laughs> he says through gritted teeth like yes <laughs> you see how far I can okay. push this before someone snaps at me and he's, the whole thing's blown just because I've got too greedy and wanting things <laughs> right <laughs> away, my fingers sir. at people <laughs> oh short one yes you Keth <laughs> he's still taller than you I've got my hat just wearing a big hat <laughs> I fear this may be the undoing of this quest. <laughs> Kev will have one short gag too many and just rip open his jacket like Argh! Hulk out of it. <laughs> just start just start <laughs> killing. So as you're looking around this uh, this rather idyllic looking beach, you see literally one path leading away and up the uh, up this sort of hill in the centre of the island to a very impressive looking manor, which appears to be the only visible building on the island. Is there a lot of uh, is there a lot of like guards around and that kind of thing? Do we is it like busy or is there not? Oh, okay, not that you can see. Is it night or day? It's daytime. Daytime. It's sort of uh, uh, I would say early uh, mid to late afternoon. So it's it's not like the middle of the day. It's the sun's going down. You're arriving, let's say four four five o'clock, sometime like that. So it's ah, uh, pre drinks. We got we've got time for pre drinks. We're in. <laughs> um, what's our we looking, we looking around drunk. for a bar on the beach again? What's, sorry, what's our cover story, lads? I'm just going to whisper this to like the guys as we're walking up. What's our cover story? Who are we? Is the question. We've well, we're here for Jeff uh, Geoff Jeff Geoff Gold yep. Dagger. Um, With my we'll be where, a security detail. Me and you, Derek. Amalrus is his... P- Derek, what was your name again? Um, Rick Danger. Danger. Rick Danger, yeah. Rick Danger. Are you his IT consultant uh, then or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, Amalrus could be He's like... just a general uh, go-getter. Amalrus could be like his personal priest. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps to me guide healthy. him in all his decisions. He's like the yoga instructor and personal assistant and health instructor. Life coach. And- Life coach, yes. Mm. Yeah. Malrus is the life coach. <laughs> Remember, Malrus, positive thinking and visualization. <laughs> I'll do my yes. best. And where are you from? This is the question that's going to be asked of you. you, have, you got a, have you got a story about where you're from? Tell Dath. Tell Dathia. I think Tell Dath might be Tell a known Dath. name, though. Del Tathia. Del Tath- Fine by me. Yeah, we're all Del Tathians. Yeah. Right. Del okay. Tathia. There we go. Del Tathia. Delta Thea, very Delta nice. Thea. I like it. 
Okay, are you? What, what are we doing? It's after Charlie, then? Thea, and before. Oh, nice, nice. nice. <laughs> Sorry. What are we doing then? What are you doing? Um, I will defer to our boss. Chip, you're in charge. Oh, this is. You are. Oh, already fuck! Really we either. didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really didn't, did we? Yeah. Um, we turn left and disappear into the jungle. I think we're, we need to find civilization. Uh, excuse me, people, we need to find civilization. Come on, I'm going to try and put on a little bit more of a posher accent because I have to get into the character of being slightly posher. So, come on, boys. This is going to be so un- unnecessarily British, and I apologise for our American Do it. listeners. Um, Do are it. A, are you That's a, right. Are you a lord come on, we, or a we need to. We need to head. Uh, I shall be... I think Lord Golddagger sounds quite nice, Lord Gold don't Dagger. you? Lord, Lord Golddagger. Gold yes. Lord Golddagger. I'll, I'll drop I, actually, my Lord. I, I, would I'll quite like, I would quite like the phrase as it's young Lord Golddagger. Mm. Are you a rapper? Not yet, but I'm trying. <laughs> young Lord Golddagger is I'm fucking breaking sick, in right? the ice. <laughs> Come on, lads. Oh. We, we must continue along this path. Find me some civilization. I need to get away from this dirty ocean and... Uh, Get myself clean, ready for the party. My apologies, bastard. Okay. C- certainly, sir. Um, Let's Steph go. and I are going to make a big show of looking around for, like, you know, danger and that kind of thing. Even- Checking yeah, a six, yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah, of that. that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Whispering into our collars. <laughs> <laughs> cuffs, very nice. <laughs> into our shirt okay. cuffs, not our collars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and we head up, I think. Okay, so you, you head up the path. It's a, you know, a nicely made winding path that leads gently up the hill until you come to a, uh, a wrought iron gate with a gatehouse and some uh, guards in dark suits with dark glasses. Mm. And So they're blinded. <laughs> Shades of Horatio K. So we have advantage. <laughs> <laughs> They are carrying formidable-looking uh, muskets, and they uh, point them vaguely in your direction and shout, "Halt!" I Who goes there. I casually hold the invitation up to like one side, like expecting someone to take it from me. Um, just sort of like hold it, like waiting for Derek or Mal, waiting for uh, Rich or M to uh, grab. Oh, yes, sort yes, of, of course, so. oh, I apologise. Uh, and then I, I sort of head over and, and go, um, uh, this is the young Lord Jeff Golddagger uh, from Teldathia. We received this invitation and have come to experience the delights of your island. I'd like to roll a deception check because most of that is a lie, or all of it is a lie. Yeah, I mean, I, let's let's do a bit of D&D, shall we? Yeah, roll it. Uh, <laughs> wicked. What? Um, the, we have to roll dice? So, so, I didn't sign up for this. This is a... So that would be a 18 plus... That's a 28. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I rolled an 8, so yeah, I mean, that's going to do it. Yeah. That's going to do it. They are, are. they are fully believing you. They say... My, my apologies for the state of our dress. We've had a, a brief journey from sea, even though we all look immaculate. <laughs> I see. Um... Do we have to stand out in the cold all day, or can we please get inside? I have had a long journey, and I'm very tired. Uh, the Lordship is expecting your Lordship, so uh, head on inside, and the uh, the footman will greet you. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to pull one of the guards just aside as we pass and go. I trust all the uh, proper arrangements have been made for the clientele that we will have here this evening. Arrangements? Um, what what arrangements are these? Um, you didn't get our forwarded missive. Ah, oh, that is. Who is your boss? Mr. Pearson. Mr. Pearson. Uh, Mr. Pearson. And your name is? Uh, Jake. Okay, Jake. Um, I'll let this one slide for now, but, but please don't let it happen again. We trusted that we would be in, you know, safe company. And we're going to have to... Uh, the the uh, um, Sir William Shaftesbury and I are going to have to... Um, check some of the surroundings before we feel comfortable to relax um we can't let our i mean i can assure you sir that the, the security of this island is top notch there is none better. i uh, yes but um the answer that you've just given me about not getting our missive doesn't fill me with exact confidence i'm afraid uh, i'm sure you're doing the best you can but um we we might as well double check it would be you know i wouldn't be doing my job properly if i didn't well if you must insist on inspecting the island i will have one of the crew come with you Naturally. And he um, gestures to one of the uh, junior security guards and he says, uh, this, is, uh, this is Dave. 
Hello, Dave. Dave. Nice to meet you. This is... I offer a hand. What was your name, my friend? Uh, my name is uh, Rick Danger, but you could just call me Rick. Dave, this is Rick. Hello, Dave. Uh, Dave is one of our junior security agents here. He will be happy to escort you around the property. Thank you very much. And as we head inside, I'll just like uh, just just say to both of them, like, good uh, good job, lads. I know it can't be easy standing out here all day. Hopefully you can get a drink, something to eat later on, and then we head inside. Okay, and you head off with, through the gates Dave. and towards the manor <laughs> with Dave. Yeah. We've got two choices here. I'm going to leave it up to you guys because a security guard is uh, obviously going to uh, escort you up to the main building. But would you? Would some of you like to go with Dave to assess the security around the perimeter, or are you happy to uh, have him lead you in and connect with him later? What do you want to is do? Is the dungeon master actively allowing us to split up? I mean, I have warned you about this before, oh, but I'm true. not, not going to hold your hand here. This is is someone going to die in a really simple search and just um, yeah, we, you're just you doing recon. Surely you I can't most die in recon. Certainly would love to see your security office, Dave. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, uh, and he says, um, "All right then, um, come with me." <laughs> <laughs> your voice has changed, Dave. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got a cold. Um, <laughs> Those strep stills are strong. Yeah, there oh, is certainly one Fisherman's friends. Uh, William, William Shaftesbury, would you, uh, f- as my fellow uh, security guard that we totally are, <laughs> would you like to <laughs> come assess the situation? You guys are weird. Yes, uh, Rick Danger, good compadre of mine. Providing the young lord uh, will give us leave for now. Sir? I, I, I nod. I nod towards them and sort of dismiss them with my hand. That's, uh, okay, so then uh, he... Just, just seeing just, how much uh, I can get away with this. At this point, <laughs> they've given me... You know, that Derek Kess smiles just, his sweetest <laughs> smile. Kess, uh, uh, so of, Dave yeah, just indicates up, uh, up to the main house for, for two of you and says the, uh, the front doors are over there. Just go and... Uh, Ring the bell and the butler will show you in. Uh, Meanwhile, you two, come with me and I'll show you our security provisions. Sir, we'll see you soon, don't worry. Come on, my lord. Don't dawdle now. We have important matters to attend to. Certainly not, sir. And I bow really, really (laughs) deeply and like obnoxiously. (laughs) Jesus, danger. Are you still here? Go, do do your duties and come on. We must, we must to the room. Yes, my lord. Come on, danger, let's go. <laughs> Through gritted Kef teeth. Yeah. Are you coming? Yes, we are. Pleased about it as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll follow him. Uh, yeah. So he leads you off uh, on a path that sort of leads on a tangent past the main uh, frontage of the, the house and towards a small porter cabin off towards the boundary. And there's a, a little set of steps up to it and he opens the, the door and inside is... Uh, your typical security cabin, you might say. There's some desks, some lockers, and a table with a set of very grubby-looking cards. And he says, well, this is the main security office. We run a few shifts, uh, staggered across the day and throughout the night as well. Uh, there's only one entrance to the property. Uh, that's the main gate you came in through. Uh, we have dog patrols walking the grounds at night and frankly there's a few wild beasts out beyond the boundaries of the property that even if you broke uh, onto the island you probably wouldn't want to be coming through the jungle because well the last person that tried we never saw again well is there anybody else in the in the security office or has he just led this into the empty he's just led you in there to uh, right. to discuss uh, and are there any kind of like magical means of like scrying that would be on sort of a closed circuit and would look slightly <laughs> like a... are you asking if there's cctv <laughs> yeah. on the yeah. property yes i am <laughs> magical <laughs> cctv <laughs> on the sphere um there isn't anything uh, in the way of magical cctv Mm. but you can see in the corner an array of uh, colored crystals Mm. uh, mounted to a board dave what are those there are perimeter alarms and they are attached to the fence that surrounds the property i assume or Uh, the fences the walls the windows the doors anytime anyone comes in so of an evening if uh, we know where the uh, the lordship is going to be we uh, make sure that there's security on uh, various parts of the property that uh, he's unlikely to be in. Uh, of course, he has his own pass, so uh, they're, they're sort of attuned to his 
aura apparently i'm not entirely sure how it works we had an uh, an artificer come in to fit it all um and he carries this of course we had him killed him, afterwards so he couldn't tell oh. anyone how it works Na- naturally, that's a very good tactic of, dave yeah very good i'm sure tactic. he got paid naturally. very well you know um we oh we paid him see- a fortune yeah well it's, it's of course the fees for being happy. executed are quite exorbitant so we took oh. most of the cut out of that <laughs> yeah cost well, it's very business, expensive <laughs> there's disposal and all sorts yeah there's a lot of counseling yeah, afterwards hell. as well oh, t- the the amount of bollocking we got from our lord for Cocking up the last couple of executions, I can tell you. Isn't that right, Sir? So, okay, I mean, uh, William. <laughs> That's right, Danger. He told me to take care of somebody, and I literally took care of him. Yeah, he gave him uh, a nice meal out for two, and uh, fuck, he was not happy. Anyway, We've all made that um, mistake, this mistake this before. Pass. <laughs> so, oh, Dave, yes, someone sure, crosses yeah. the fences, someone breaks the perimeter, the crystal go off in that it lights area. up in that area God, and we know exactly where you can see there the little labels they tell you where that crystal is is attuned to so we know where the breach or the un in unauthorized uh, access has been and uh, we dispatch the runners your colonel uh he carries a pass with him does it? well it's not so much a pass as uh he carries himself with him and uh yeah oh, he right. has uh, what they call in the <laughs> the performance industry access all areas don't uh, don't tell the young lord about it. He'll be asking us for one of them next. Won't he? I'll leave you. I'll leave Bloody it to tell. I'll leave you to tell your lordship. Our lordship probably um, won't tell yeah, your lordship we... either. It's uh, a closely no, guarded of secret. Not. So, uh, oh well, thank, mum's thank the you word, as so they say. Us it. security agents, we've got to know these things, but uh, got to stick together. Yeah. And he taps the side of his nose. And Derek sort of taps his as well, conspiratorial. <laughs> Where do we get our passes from then, Dave? You know. <laughs> us all being security agents, of course. Say, so if we wanted to come here and chill out in your uh, lovely uh, cabin. Well, you were able to come in here because uh, my my access grants me access to this building. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to access it without a member of security with oh, you. Right. Uh, although there are a number of areas on the property that are, as they say, public areas, so you will be able to access those. That will include things like the uh, the the parlour, the breakfast room, dining room, um, ballroom, uh, if that's been opened. Uh, there's a library. You can, there's a billiards room as well. That's quite a, that's quite fancy. Uh, there's all, there's a, quite a fair few public areas in the house, but there are, of course, more private areas like his lordship's study, um, the, the, the master suites and bedrooms. And, of course, if you are intending to stay, there will be uh, suites allocated to your lordship. And you will, of course, uh, be free to access the servants' quarters for lodgings of your own. Oh, well, that's uh, very kind of you, uh, despite the fact that you clearly didn't get our missive that we sent ahead. Uh, but it's nice to know that a lot of our concerns have been satisfied. Tell me um, if, just one more thing as I'm about to leave the door and I do like that. Like, <laughs> like, you're sort of outside and then you just pop your head yeah. back in. As I'm like uh, fiddling just with a cigar thing. in my hand. Um, uh, how many guards are there you got on your, your payroll? Well, his <laughs> payroll. That's a very suspicious question, my friend. Um, yeah, just making sure that we're, we've got, you know, we're nice and secure up here. Wouldn't want to get my hands dirty again. I've sort of given up that. We've got a duty of care to our young lord. We need to make sure all the security provisions are taken care of. I'm sure you understand one well, security duty agent of to care. another. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> well, certainly one security agent to another. I can assure you that uh, our lordship has taken all preventable measures to ensure that your lordship is uh, and will always remain his own lordship. Well, of course, but uh, let me tell you, Sam, something about this game. We've been in... William, how long have we been doing this? I've been doing this for <laughs> some 20-odd years now. 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Quite uh, easily. And he was he was there when I started. Clearly, I'm the younger and more handsome of the two. Well, that is very um, clear. But uh, if if not slightly mm. taller, uh, I have to say, <laughs> you're uh, for a half orc. You're shorter than I expected. Oh, <laughs> so's my temper, young man. Don't push it. Uh, as as I was saying, uh, uh, it'd be nice to know that we're in uh, uh, you know considerably armed company beyond magic it tends to fail at the worst of tends to fail at the worst of times to be <laughs> honest so you know if, if i knew that we had say two dozen guards uh, I, I couldn't possibly say exactly how many there are because well 
it's security, you know, we, we can't reveal all the secrets. To be honest with you, I've probably told you a little no, more than uh, I probably should have done, but you seem like good no, down-to-earth, no, no, on-the-level uh, dwarves and half-orcs. Is that a short joke? <laughs> it's just, uh, but put it this way, if, uh, if the island were to be invaded by marauding pirates, buccaneers and the likes, uh, there would need to be a good few ships worth before uh, we were outnumbered and certainly before we were outgunned. That is good to know. That gives Very me that warm, know. fuzzy feeling. Dogs as well. I like and it. And you've, yeah, you've clearly uh, disguised the uh, the arsenal that you've got around quite well because we didn't see any guns coming well, in. Well, security only works if it's uh, well uh, disguised. Uh, discreet, discreet. One agent to I can another. Say the same thing myself. <laughs> Excellent work, young man. Well, your lordship doesn't want to come in seeing cannons and uh, and sharp barbed no, wire everywhere. Not. No, he wants to see beautiful ornate fencing. And uh, as a colonel, he gets that enough of that at work, does he? Well, his lordship is retired now. But uh, listen, uh, your lordship is probably waiting for you back up at the house. Let's. Uh, I don't uh, care for you to leave him uh, unprotected uh, on his on a personal level for any oh, extended no, I'm level sure of he's time. So very safe. Certainly, as certainly. You've told but us. Uh, personal security is best served on person naturally so uh, um, let me take you back up to the house and uh, we'll uh, locate your lordship and then i shall get back uh, to my shift oh that would be excellent i wouldn't want to get you in trouble and uh, give our best to the uh, gent that took taurus inside uh, will Jake? you um, yes of course that's his name um well as as he starts leading us back i'd like to yep. turn to him at some point and just go um Sort of just like very casually, like uh, so. If we wanted to um, find you, go for a you know a swift half once we clock off. Whereabouts are you going to be stationed for the rest of the evening? Are you asking for the uh, the movements of uh, security personnel on a scheduled basis? No, 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 no. no, Sort of sounds like he's asking for his number. No, (laughs) or or Hmm. yeah, or uh, or you looking to uh, take him for a drink? I'm asking how I can find my new friend, uh, (laughs) Dave. That was it. (laughs) Jesus, Danger, your memory's getting terrible. <laughs> oh, yes. A uh, couple of knocks to the old noggin. I'm sorry, Dave, you've seen some really horrible stuff. <laughs> I've done some really horrible stuff as well, Dave. <laughs> Haven't we all? Yes. <laughs> uh, you don't get I into this business without it. having done uh, some questionable things. Anyway, if you're looking for me later, uh, just yards, find uh, your nearest, uh, your nearest uh, member of the security team and ask them for Dave. They'll, uh, they'll know where to find me. Thanks, Dave. And you're Dave, are you? I'm I'm Dave, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, good to know. <laughs> you're very strange. God's sake, Derek. <laughs> Dave, we'll see you later. Keep it up. Stay vigilant, stay sharp. Have you been... Uh, did you get kicked by a horse? You could say that, yes, Dave. <laughs> I'm tiring of you now. I should, I should have to go to my boss and I'm tell him all about you. you. See you later, Dave. <laughs> that was so menacing. Derek, Derek's in a silly mood. <laughs> yeah. The lads opened the letter, though it took them a while. Then a short montage later, they had a new style. Kath, no smaller, went in search of a cure. But Starflower said no, and of that she was sure. Now on an island with identities under cover, what dark secrets of the Colonel will they discover? So Mowers and Jeff have gone off to the house, while Derek and Keth get escorted about. Will Derek get the security to tell him when and where? Find out next time on Roll Britannia. Roll Britannia.